He is the most famous playwright in the Western world, and arguably, on the whole planet. In your city or town, there are droves of students, actors, historians, who are reading William Shakespeare, at this very second. But all famous people, are created by circumstance. What allowed this bard of Avon, to become a household name? This is London, in the Elizabethan era, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. This was the beginning of English Renaissance theatre. Plays and theatre had always been popular, dating back to ancient Greece, and even the Middle Ages, but this Queen of England would kickstart a revival in the arts, by sponsoring actors and writers. Theatre became less religiously themed, and added more humanist and historical elements, coinciding with Renaissance ideals. With the Crown and nobles funding these actors, they would form professional acting troops, and travel to perform. But they would eventually need a permanent home. In 1576, actor James Burbage would found the theatre, London's first. By the end of the 1500s, there were numerous playhouses built all around England. In 1599, the theatre would relocate south of the Thames, and be known as the famous Globe Theatre. Burbage's sons were the owners, along with a playing company called Lord Chamberlain's Men. One of which was this man. William Shakespeare. Shakespeare would go on to write at least 37 plays, including comedies like Twelfth Night, which involves a shipwreck, and romantic shenanigans, historical plays, like Henry V, which surround the events of the Battle of Agincourt, and tragedies, like the famous Romeo and Juliet, where everyone dies. The Globe Theatre gave traveling actors a place to perform, and without having to deal with the burden of travel, they were able to produce higher quality plays, using crude special effects. The Playhouse could seat from 2,500 to 3,000 people. Apart from Shakespeare, Elizabethan theatre is also known for Christopher Marlowe. The first official record of his work was in 1587, for the play Tamburlaine. It is based on Timur, the Central Asian conqueror, who founded the Timurid Empire in the late Middle Ages, and is regarded as the last of the great nomadic conquerors. Marlowe would also later write Dido, Queen of Carthage, a play focused on the legendary Phoenician. Marlowe would be murdered in 1594, at the age of 29. The official reason was a barroom brawl, but rumors say the playwright might also have been a spy, and orders could have come from a more powerful source. Ben Jonson is regarded as a third great icon of the period. His play, Isle of Dogs, from 1597, was reported to the authorities as being seditious and slanderous, and was quickly suppressed. He later had a stint in jail for killing actor Gabriel Spencer in a duel. Renaissance theatre would continue after Elizabeth's reign ended, with Jacobean theatre under King James, and Caroline theatre, under Charles I. With the rise of the Puritans though, plays were seen as sinful, being raucous entertainment. During the English Civil War, Puritans would take control of London, and in 1642, ban the staging of plays. With the restoration of the monarchy in the late 1600s though, plays would continue, and playwrights' works would be compiled and printed. While this is a boon historically, reading Shakespeare in classrooms is often monotonous, tedious, and clumsy. Theatre is a full experience, being surrounded by other enthusiasts, seeing the actors on stage, hearing their voices, seeing the flow of their costumes. It's the way the media was to be consumed, not on the quiet black and white pages we are given in a classroom. And we do think, that Queen Elizabeth, would be in agreement. <laughs>